I want to talk about the art of consistency, the art of doing something day in, day out, even if it's tiny and what a huge effect that can have on our lives. That's what we're talking about in today's episode. Strap in and get ready for episode 156. Let's go. I've always been that skinny guy. Why can't I gain muscle mass? What do I do in the gym? They said I'd always be skinny. This is your complete source for how to gain lean muscle and break out of your skinny body. From nutrition to getting the most out of your workouts and everything in between. We know just how frustrating gaining muscle mass can be. But don't worry, we've got you covered. You're listening to the Bones to Bulk podcast. Hey, welcome to today's episode. My name is Brian Purdy, and I will be your host today. And before we dive in, if you are struggling with your goals, you've been trying to figure out all this food stuff, all this workout stuff, and it's just not clicking for you, I do offer personal one-on-one online training that you can check out at bonestobook.com. I create a meal plan, workout plan, specifically for you, your quirks, your tendencies, what equipment you have on hand, and I walk through it with you for eight weeks. We meet each week over Zoom and just discuss, you know, how things are going. We make adjustments as needed, and I work through those mental and physical barriers with you. So if you're interested in that, you can either direct message me on pretty much any social platform at Bones to Bulk, or check out our website, bonestobulk.com, to find out more about that. With that being said, let's get into today's content. So today, I want to actually do something a little different. I want to read you something from my book. Hear that? That's actually a book I'm holding in my hand. It's not a digital book, not an ebook. Right, but I wanna read you, this is from The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, and if you've never read this book, holy crap, you need to pick it up. Zero to do, well, I'm not gonna say zero to do with fitness. It's not a fitness book, that's that's basically what I mean, but almost every single principle in here can be applied to fitness. I wanna read just a short excerpt from it. This is on page 56 of the book, and it says, there's a story about a man riding a horse, galloping quickly. It appears he's going somewhere very important, and a man standing along the road shouts, where are you going? The rider replies, I don't know, ask the horse. This is the story of most people's lives. They're riding the horse of their habits with no idea where they're headed. It's time to take control of the reins and move your life in the direction of where you really want to go. If you've been living on autopilot and allowing your habits to run you, I want you to understand why. Wow, like wow, 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 there's so much in that. And I wanna dissect it a little bit. So what he's saying is so true. We live in an autopilot mode. You know, we don't think about the habits that we do every day. They're they're habits that we don't have to think about them. We do them without thinking. You know, whether it's getting up and going through the McDonald's drive-thru every day or going to the vending machine after lunch and grabbing an afternoon snack. You know, we have these certain habits in place and often we don't even stop to ask ourselves, why are we doing this? Where are these habits taking us? Where are we going? What is the direction? And that's a dangerous place to be in because when we don't really dissect our habits, we don't dissect where we're going, then we can end up in a place we don't want to be. And I know for a lot of us, you know, I talk to a lot of people that I train and they're kind of like, you know, I was used to be in shape and I used to be physically active. I used to play sports or it could be any number of things. And just time has gone by. And I looked in the mirror one day, I'm like, what happened? And it's those everyday habits that get us there. But here's the good news. Just how those everyday little things got us to where we're at now. If we want to turn that around, we all we have to do is change the everyday habits. And I know that sounds like a lot of work, but it's really not because we don't have to dive in head first. We don't have to have all the answers right away or, you know, just crush every single goal from the get go, because that's not going to happen. We're going to screw up. We're going to mess up. We're going to take two steps forward and one step back. And, you know, when you're climbing a mountain, you've got all these different parts to it where you're going to go up. It's going to level off. It may go down a little bit, then you're going to go up again. And so it may feel like you're not making headway, but you are. You're still continually taking the path that leads up the mountain. And that's really how I want you to approach fitness. It's not a 30 day fix or pill that you take or, you know, do this 60 day fitness boot camp and then everything is going to solve your problems or 75 hard or, you know, those, none of those things are necessarily bad, but you're not going to get your end goal just from that. You know, I see so many people right now, 75 hard is super popular. And again, I'm not dogging it at all. Like it's a, it's a good little thing to give you a kick in the pants and to start working out. But thinking that, you know, that's the answer to everything. It's not, 
because you can do 75 hard and eat like shit and nothing change. And you can get to the end of doing 75 hard and go back to your old habits and get off the bandwagon because you've gone so hard for 75 days. You're like, oh, I deserve a break. And then you just get out of the habit and don't do anything. So that's why some of these intensive boot camp things I'm not a huge fan of just because it's not building a solid habit that you can continue forever. And I'm all about things that last. I'm all about doing something that you can upkeep forever. If you've listened to any of my previous podcasts, or even if this is your first time, like I truly, truly believe that if you can't stick with something, don't even start it. It's not worth it because what's going to happen is you're going to start it. You're going to get pumped. You're going to try to do something. And then because it's such a short term structure thing, you're going to fall. You're going to fail and you may go back to square one. And then you're going to be even more depressed because you're thinking, well, I tried that and it didn't work. So I'm just hopeless. I'd rather you take a baby step that works. That is a lifelong habit and another baby step and another baby step. And even if it takes you a year or two years or three years or five years to get to your goal, that's okay. It's sustainable. And it's all about sustainability. I get so sad when people come to me and they tell me that they tried, you know, this diet plan or meal plan and they had some success with it and then they gained all their weight back or lost all their muscle and it it makes me sad because these programs are not teaching how to build that foundation how to build that sustainable lifestyle because we think it's the big things we think it's the huge you know successes the once we can run five miles or once we can lift 300 pounds on the bench press then we'll be in shape these are ridiculous measurements for for that kind of thinking like being in shape looks different first off to all of us you know my goals may be different than your goals and your goals may be different than the next person's and that's okay we all have different places we want to be at so to put a you know finite number or goal on anything is is tough. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't have both short-term and long-term goals, but just understand that they're going to shift, they're going to change, they're going to adapt with you as you change. And as your journey continues, those changes that you're making are going to change themselves. And you're gonna be like, huh, this works better for me. I'm gonna lean a little bit more into this. Or, you know what, this doesn't really work for me, so I'm gonna try something else. It's this continually evolving thing. And as we get healthier, as we get more fit, we have to constantly be readjusting and retrying things. Again, it's, you know, you don't learn any skill by trying it one way. You have to try different things. If you're setting out to be a musician and you want to, you know, play an instrument, and I'm speaking a little little bit from understanding because I've played drums my entire life, but you don't just try one way of doing it. You don't play one chord progression or one beat on the drums or one scale on the keys. Like you have to do a myriad of different things because it builds your skill. It refines how you're able to play. And it's the same way with fitness. You can't just do one thing and that's the answer to all your problems. It takes trying a lot of different things. It takes adjusting and readjusting and changing your calories and changing your macros and changing your workout plans and constantly be shifting it. But here's the thing. Here's the good news. Those changes don't have to be these huge dramatic things. They can be small little things. Adding in one extra healthy food and eliminating one unhealthy food each month. It can be getting in five to 10 more minutes of exercise a day than you are used to. It doesn't have to be a huge thing that you have to change. It can be done with small everyday steps. I'm going to read one more thing from this book by Darren Hardy, The Compound Effect. It says, more often than not, the extra effort doesn't cost that much more money or energy. When I was selling real estate, everyone else would call on expired listings when they came up. Instead, I got in my car and showed up on their doorstep and hand delivered a sold sign. Take this, I'd say when they'd open the door. You'll need it if you hire me to take over this listing. For the price it took to keep my gas tank full, I immediately and exponentially increased my chance of getting the listing. Here was someone who was confident in their ability and made one small adjustment, one small adjustment, and increased his revenue. And we, again, we always think it's these big, you know, huge campaigns, these big, huge things, but it's the little everyday life changes. So don't ever think that making one small change won't help you. Make that small change today. Go after it. Stay consistent. All right, I'm done with my rant for today. Thank you so much for listening. If you are on any social media platform, please find us. We are everywhere at 
Bones to Bulk. I'd love to connect with you. And if you're not a part of our text community, text the word podcast to 706-222-7551. You will get an automated message just saying, hey, you're signed up. Thanks for joining. But after that, if you have any questions, you can text them to me. It is not a bot. I actually respond to all those. So would love to connect with you that way. All right. With that being said, remember, no matter what you come up against, you can hit your fitness goals. You've got this. We'll be right back. 